Hey there, this is the Chris Abraham Show, Season 7, Episode 3. It is Happy Easter in the United States. It is 1031. The I am recovering from a deep-seated malaise that I had yesterday, including, like, some coughing, low energy. I called up my lovely sister Linda, and she told me just to chillax, so... I spent the entire day watching the Netflix series from 2000, was it, called Messiah. And uh, madly in love with that girl who plays the CIA op, CIA field op. And um, forget her name, though, because she gets mixed in with so many other skinny, beautiful, like, mousy white girls, like the girl from... uh, from Grey's Anatomy and like there's a million other hers so I should respect her by uh saying what her name is let's see uh comment dire comment dire comment dire let's see come on cast of the cast of the movie or the TV series Messiah All right, Michelle Monaghan. Michelle Monaghan plays, she's 48. So, so nice to be fetishizing a woman who was 43 when she made the uh, show, but who is 48 now. So, I feel like my objectification of her is, is age appropriate since I just turned 54. Um, I don't know what to talk about. It's it's Easter. I have been tweeting and tooting and Facebooking and posting about how much of a terrible Christian I've been. Um, haven't been to church in forever. I do have a lot of religious friends, though, and so I'm keeping highly spiritualized with my uh, Muslim Albanian friend and my... Uh, my um, my follower of Jesus, Jewish friend, and uh, my humanist friend, Jason. So, keeping it spicy, I do listen to a lot when I'm in the mood. Like, oftentimes we'll, like, say Mark them red when it comes to uh, daily office podcasts. And I'm trying to start the Bible again, and so then when I start to try the Bible... And I get narcolepsy. Then I'm like, okay, I'll buy the audiobook with a awesome, beautiful voice, black celebrity reading it. And then I don't do that. And then uh, there's this really great podcast uh, about like the spiritual experiences. It's like it's like Christian coast to coast, and. I think his name is Tracker John or something like that. And he does a daily or a weekly podcast where he interviews people based on their mystical Christian experiences. So I will share all the creepy personal experiences of my family. Um, mine are all heavily based on on coincidences and magical realism. But my mom and dad have like legit experiences of the other world for example i don't know if i said this before because i might every episode of this because of my sdam might be the same episode over and over and over again but i don't really want to talk about i don't really want to talk about francis scott Keybridge getting knocked over i don't really want to talk about robert uh f kennedy jr and his poaching of votes I don't want to talk about the fact that no matter what the mainstream media ever talks about, they never say populism. And there is a huge populist uprising. The uh, mainstream Republicans and mainstream Democrats are on the same side. And they basically are, um, I guess they would be fascists because the populists, are the populists the fascists? I don't know. But... Nobody wants to call Tulsi Gabbard a populist. Nobody wants to call RFK Jr. uh, a populist. Nobody wants to call the Trumpers, the MAGA, 
maybe he's not, but Donald Trump appeals to the populist's world. And, and honestly, once the populace, and I'm not even saying working class, I'm not even saying Christian. Um, Trump only appeals to populist Christians. But let me get back, speaking of that, to my Roman Catholic mom who literally was a virgin until she was 33, while her mom and dad and her sisters and everybody in the neighborhood, even though she was going to church every Sunday and more days than that because she was just a good Catholic girl, um, it wasn't until she took a trip to Italy, to Roma, to the Vatican, when she was constantly having her butt pinched by Italian men that she thought maybe the church was bullshit. But she was still, till she was 33, she was a, a Irish Catholic virgin beauty. And as a result, like, even though we never went to church, we never went to church for like even holidays, holy days or anything. Um, there was so much Catholicism in the house. And even now, my, uh, I have a St. Christopher medal on my, uh, my, on my keys. And, uh, I have a chain around my neck. It's just a chain around my neck without a clasp. And it's a big pain to take over my big fat melon head. So I'm thinking about finding a way of having a, uh, a Christian glyph, um, soldered or attached or whatever to my chain around my neck and then just wear it. I was wearing a rosary recently. I was seeing how that felt. And the only reason I took it off is because, because I wear, um, over the shoulder bags, like, like courier bags, the, uh, crucifix was just like getting in my business. So that's the devil trying to make me stop. Anyway, so my mom tells me these stories, and I probably have told you them already. Uh, not that anybody listens, but she told me about uh, knocking her head on uh, Lake Lake. She and her parents did what all upper middle class immigrants did. Uh, second gen, they all got houses uh, either on the Jersey Shore or uh, in northern New Jersey on a lake. And uh, uh, I mentioned it elsewhere, but it's like Lake Okeechoke or Lake Lake Mohawk. Lake Mohawk. My mom actually drove us in my Pop-Pop's awful big Lincoln car to the lake. And it was really awesome. Like, you know, now like they have summer camps and they have uh, you know, and it's not like big villas like people have now. These summer camps, these summer homes were like little bungalows. They were little bungalows. And what what parents would do, dads would do, is send their wife and kids to this beautiful lake all summer. And then they would come visit on the weekends. So they would stay at either a pied-a-terre in the city, or they would go home every night to their commuting house. Uh, and then on the weekend, they would get in their car and they'd drive Friday afternoon, drive to Lake Mohawk, spend the weekend, and then drive, uh, I guess, Sunday night or Monday morning, depending on how senior they are, drive back to uh, their home, either in Jersey or... Uh, when when my pop up did that, he lived in uh, they lived in Jersey City, so it was right across the Hudson from um, from uh, New York City. So it was a close commute. But Mohawk uh, was really North Jersey, uh, almost to uh, like where you really know it's Garden State. Um, and she was like she was a water kid. Like she told me that she was a chubby girl, and then at like twelve or thirteen. She, uh, she just like, she sprouted like a little rose, she did. And just, she would drink a gallon of whole white milk a day. Uh, drink it. Each girl had their own gallon of white milk in the fridge. And each girl would go into the, into the kitchen and they would gulp from their big thing of white milk. Which is funny because, um, 
modern athletics suggests that like gulping chocolate milk or white milk is a recovery beverage is like the thing to do um Comedy. hello birdie you want to be on the podcast no it's a house sparrow visiting me looking for food anyway she was being uh the little dolphin that she was in lake lake mohawk and uh this is the area that used to be last of the mohicans right she was basically like the family had a crib in like the mohawk territory of new jersey new york she was she was the last of my Mohicans. Uh, anyway, she was playing and she hit her head on one of those f- um, floating platforms. And she rang her bell. She banged her rel. And she went underwater. She went splooge. And underwater she went and she said that she, upon recovery... She heard uh, the uh, she heard church bells and she heard choir of angels. She heard a choir of angels, and uh, I'm terrible. I don't even remember the story. She was either uh, whisked to the surface by angels and cherubim, or someone, maybe a lifeguard or something, saved her. But she had a miraculous experience as a young girl in Lake Mohawk. The next time she tells me, and there's tons more, but these are the only two I remember, is I don't know why she was on a bus. I don't know why she was on a train. I don't know why it was foggy or dark at night or raining or something. I don't know if this is actually from a uh, Black Mirror or some sort of other TV show. But allegedly, I think I remember that my mom told me that she got off of a bus or her car broke down or off of a train or something. But it was dark at night, and she got lost, turned around. Remember, this is in the uh, 50s or 60s when uh, you are, uh, in in the 60s, I guess, when you are most certainly no ways, no Google Maps, no maps with you. She got turned around, she got lost, and a gentle man came up to her and, and, and led her to a an all-night diner, and when she turned to thank him slash offer him coffee slash offer pie, um, he was gone. And there's all these kinds of stories all over the place about people who, people who, like, show up like these. And I don't know, it could have been, I listened to a lot of NPR, and during uh, the holy days, there are a lot of radio shows where someone is in a bar and they're drinking their life away and someone sits down next to them and it's Jesus or it's an angel or it's God or it's Moses or it's generally Jesus or John the Baptist or someone. So my mom could have been influenced by this, but I like to think that my mom's stories are real. We have all kinds of really mystical pagan stories about uh, Madame Pele, the goddess of fire in Hawaii. In fact, somewhere maybe in my archives at my storage area, there might be a photo of Madame Pele, uh, like a bust of her looking all uh, magical, crazy, and fine that we took that was on the side of a caldera. And my mom were like, my mom and I were complete, because, you know, Roman Catholicism is basically um, uh, polytheism. Uh, with a monotheistic glaze. I mean, I know that. I feel that's why Roman Catholicism and uh, is so threatened by Masonry. Because, you know, Masonry is like, okay, as long as you believe in a God, we're good. Like, you can have, you know, the Abrahamic God. You can have the Jewish Abrahamic God. You can have the Muslim Abrahamic God. You can have the Christian Abrahamic God. You can have the Catholic. Oh, by the way, um, Jews and Muslims do not consider Catholicism to be monotheistic because of our saints, which um, a great many, uh, uh, most Jews 
and all Jews and most Arabs, like there are certainly uh, sects of Judaism, like in uh, in Iran, that do believe in mystical saints. But for the most part, because we have uh, three in one, because we have uh, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is one God for, an, for now and forever. Amen. That's considered to be kind of like the influence of uh, Constantine on the early church, the early church that was monotheistic. Uh, then it was defiled by Rome and turned into this like 365 saints. Like it's as it's as polytheistic as um, as uh, Hinduism. And that's a lot of gods. I mean, there's a feast day for everybody. And like I said, in my growing up, we've even added, as a Marianist growing up, we've even added, um, oh, while my mom and dad did not practice religion, um, seventh grade, because I was scared of Central High School in Hawaii Ne in Oahu, downtown Oahu, I was so scared because I was a fucking Howley. And being a fucking Howley means there's Kill Howley Day. And I, did, I thought that maybe a private school would be more civilized. Turns out that on my first week at school, I needed to brutally pound a uh, a kid uh, almost to death in order to prove, uh, you know, it was like, um, I consider being a Howley in Hawaii to kind of be uh, prison rules. I, I probably got it wrong because these are really lovely menches now that they're in their 50s. My uh, brothers, it's from St. Louis. But I was scared for my life. So when I got there, someone challenged me to a fight and I I kicked him, I beat him, I knocked him over, I continued kicking him until people pulled me away. And because I didn't have a lot of friends, there weren't a lot of strong people to pull me away. So it went pretty far. And from then after, I was called, oh, Chris, he's cool, but he's fucking crazy, brah. So based on that, from 7th to 12th grade, I was not only inculcated in Catholicism, I was inculcated in um, what's called Marianism, Marist philosophy. I was also inculcated because my, uh, I went to an all boys Catholic school, but my like super duper, like boy crush, like the guy I would do anything to be more like, like the dude I envied, thought he was the most badass guy in the entire world was Charles among man. I thought he was the bee's knees and he was also extremely evangelical and really into like, even at 17, when I was 14 or 15, 13, when I was 13, he was 17. He was already into like the Roosevelt's conspiracy and, you know, none call it, none call it, uh, uh, none dare call it conspiracy. Uh, the Roosevelt conspiracy, JFK conspiracy, moon landing conspiracy, like back when I was, uh, we used to go to this typewriter repair shop and against one wall, they had all the folded like pamphlets with all the conspiracies about like really Zionistic stuff, like all over the place. Um, so I was inculcated by an evangelical conspiracy theorist, right? This is um, 1983 when people, when this stuff was really fringe really fringe like lodges up in the mountains fringe cabins in the hills fringe rural cabin in the hills fringe or you know weird brooklyn guy you know weird brooklyn guy uh with a rent control department uh guy early like you know computer hacker guy kind of thing and the marionist and the marionist is pretty cool because it fed into my upbringing is a uh as an animist hawaiian howling right like everything we learned growing up was about native american lore it was about uh uh the night walkers the night walkers night watchmen night walkers it was about carrying pig over the poly it was about um madame pele it was about not taking rocks out of holy areas because it'll be it'll hex you 
It was about um, Madame Pele saving churches when there were fires or eruptions, saving all the uh, all the like in the TV series um, um, Como de Messiah, you know, saving all the churches and letting everybody else burn in Hilo, that kind of thing, right? So, so like Marianism is pretty interesting because like uh, in most Catholicism, you say in order to get to God, Jesus needs to know your name. But, but in Marianism, which because I was inculcated in Mary worship, no, because I was inculcated in, I don't even know if inculcated is the right word, what does the what does the word inculcated mean here's the definition of inculcate instill an attitude idea or habit by persistent instruction wow i nailed it thank god good Catholic and $80,000, uh, GW education. Um, so I was inculcated about, uh, the, uh, the Menehunes. I was uh, inculcated that, um, uh, that there were, uh, water gods and that like Moana, Moana is a person, but like there's, uh, there's Maui. And I think Maui is the God of the sea, Maui. Anyway, um, uh, Pele, Madame Pele was the goddess of fire. And like, I, I like low key kind of showed utmost respect to all these and becoming a Marianist at 13, 12, 11, 13, when is seventh grade anyway, um, means that like, obviously when the Catholics came to Hawaii, and converted the uh, animist Hawaiians to Christianity. You know, just like in Santeria, they had lots of stand-ins for, uh, for, for the various saints and figures in Catholicism. So, obviously, the reason why Marianists, Marianists uh, did so well on Oahu is, uh, um, is because of the Madame Pele thing. Everybody like equated Madame Pele with uh, with our with Our Lady with the Mary Mother of God, um, and so as a result, it was sort of like you, Jesus needed to know your name so you can get into heaven and meet God. But if heaven is a club, uh, you need to get on. You know, the doorman Jesus needs to know your name, but Mary needs to get you on the list, right? In order to avoid uh, being in purgatory, yo, 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 you really need to get on Mary's list. So, I mean, in many cases, I, I, I say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and ble blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our deaths. Amen. All the time, like whenever I do, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that's where we used to stop, until I started going to 12-step meetings with my ex-girlfriend, Urs. It would be like, keep coming back, it works if you work it. No, no, um, it would be... Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I never knew that one. When did they add that? Did they ever add that to the Catholic Church? Is that an Episcopal thing? Uh... When I do my, uh, my, the, the time I do most of the rosary, which isn't based on a rosary, it's just based on saying, 
uh, Hail Marys and Our Fathers over and over again generally has to do with uh, flying on an airplane. And I don't know where that happened. I've always been comfortable on airplanes. But, um, yeah, so my mom thought she was being, uh, my mom remembers being walked to a diner, uh, turning around and nobody was there. My dad's stuff was always just about ghosts. Like, my dad was a little bit of a ghost hunter. And he did see this famous ghost. I think it might be Kalapapa or someplace where if you look at a particular lighthouse, a, um, a, a ghost comes out, uh, looks around, bends over and disappears, comes out, walks around, bends over, looks somewhere and disappears. And that's like, people think that that's just kind of like um, uh, the, um, the, I don't know, the optics of the lighthouse. Um, but my dad likes to think that uh, ghosts are like impressions of people's spirits. Like there's this belief that um, ghosts are an imprint of trauma. And so you can have ghosts that have that short of a kind of a, of a recovery. I need to ask Mary Vandeman if she's still around. I need to ask her um, about the day before my dad died. My dad passed away. Uh, really spicy reasons. Like I was told he died covered in what he felt like was ants, but was in fact being overwhelmed by a heart attack while he was photographing um, G. Uh, General, no, no, um, uh, General Motors award parts award winners in um, in Puerto Rico when we were there for two months for uh, General Motors parts, Mopar, I guess. And he was photographing these people doing this horsey thing. But in fact, the truth was, is that he was apparently, according to my ex-girlfriend who heard this on a dive boat with Tom Yo in Hawaii when they were scuba diving off of Waikiki, probably diving the Amazon Mahi wreck, that my dad was having sex with his co-worker slash married lady, Mary. And uh, I think they were covered in whipped cream or something. And my dad had a mad heart attack doing the thing he loved best, which was Mary. And I like that story more, but from 1995 until 1998, I didn't know the true story. I thought the the horse story was true. <clears throat> but um, uh, what was my point? Oh, Mary, um, the, the night before uh, he died, or the night that he died, depending on the story, or maybe it was um, morning, 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 morning lovemaking. I don't know. Uh, Whipped cream is kind of a nighttime lovemaking thing. But um, they, if you'll know, uh, Puerto Rico is one of the three sides of the um, the triangle, the, uh, the blah, blah, blah triangle, the, the, uh, you know what? I think I'm losing my mind. What is the spooky triangle that's connected to Puerto Rico where all the ships get lost? The Bermuda Triangle. According to History.com, the Bermuda Triangle is a mythical section of the Atlantic Ocean roughly bounded by Miami, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico where dozens of ships and airplanes have disappeared. Thank you. Well, the night before... Uh, or maybe the night before that, or I don't know. It's been since 1995. Uh, both, uh, I think everybody that was over on the other side of the island that had a condo where they did all the prepping for the show we were producing. If you want to know more about that, I'm happy to share. Um, apparently they all saw a, uh, a UFO offshore and, um, they were, we were all staying. The hotel we were working from is called El Conquistador. It might have a new name, El, Con El Conquistador Resort and Golf Club or something. And uh, and they were across the bay at the uh, 
like the um, residential area, and they had uh, rented a, a hotel room for two months. And I staying with my colleague in a hotel room in uh, in the in the hotel <coughs> in the resort. Um, this is a classy resort. People would arrive by helicopter, and um, and when we were there, uh, there were two U.S. Supreme Court justices. I believe it was you know the the uh, Italian guy who died of like stitchy, sketchy circumstances, and the and was it Ruth? Bader Ginsburg that he liked to travel with Ruth Bader Ginsburg and uh, Justice Alito are those the two? Anyway, um, that's all the spooky spice that I have. But uh, I did not attend either Midnight Mass, either uh, Sunrise Mass, or uh, Ten O'clock Mainstream. Big hats and flowers mask, mostly because I don't have I don't have pretty attire. Like I really need to buy some nice khakis, nice button down, and a nice blue blazer. And you know the uh, Blundstones are good enough, but I really wanted to lose some more weight before I did that. So really, like in many ways, it's uh, it's wardrobe that's keeping me from attending uh, church and lodge meetings. Uh, but I think I'm just using that as an excuse. I guess I really don't want to go because the amount of money that I spend on coffee and bags and things like that, I could have such a sweet wardrobe. Anyway, uh, I don't, I'm not going to talk about what's happening in Ukraine. I'm not talking about, uh, Biden. I'm not talking about, uh, Trump. I am tempted to buy the $60 Bible just for entertainment value in the same way that I was tempted to buy a solid gold looking gold LeMay uh, Trump shoes, but I won't get either of them. I won't get any of them. The only reason I might get a Trump Bible is because it has, it's so camp and it's also large. uh, It's also, uh, what is it called? Large, uh, large font. And I need large font now because I haven't bought into glasses yet. I don't need them on a daily basis, but, um, oh, I hope we're caught up. I hope we're caught up. Um, uh, if you go to eBay and look for Goin Originals, G-O-I-N Originals, you'll find a lot of bags that I'm selling. Lots and lots. Uh, Linda does not do, uh, auctions, so they're all at a price and she's always negotiable. So... If you go in and tell her that you uh, listen to the Chris Abraham show, maybe she will hook you up. I don't know. And uh, happy Easter to you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Um, And Godspeed. And I will talk to you soon. Next episode is season seven, episode four. Aloha, mahalo, and alvidezade. Ciao.